Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Iranian Market Minute. Today is Monday, May 16th. This is episode number 123. My name is Justin Hewn. I am your host and the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. As always, nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing and always take responsibility for your own choices. All right, welcome back. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we saw a little bit more of a calm market today, generally speaking, although the S&P did close slightly down. Uranium shares were mostly in the green. Before we show you the charts and get into the daily scoreboard, a little bit of housekeeping. This coming Friday, May 20th, will be our May Uranium Insider Pro members only webinar. This, this is a two hour long, typically around two hours long, uh, deep dive into the sector. We'll have a special guest again this month. We hope to see you there if you are a member. If you are not a member and you're interested in seeing the type of content we put out, if you click the link below in the description, you will be able to download a sample of a previous month's newsletter. And of course, you will have access to all of our previous content and all of our previous recorded webinars. Um, if you are a member, we hope to see you there. If you cannot make it to the live webinar, it will be recorded and you can download that or stream that later on in the day from our website. Okay, with that said, let's jump right into the daily scoreboard here. Spot price of uranium falling a bit here, 48.50 mid-market, right around the long-term price for uranium. I would be surprised to see this fall much more from here. Although we are still in a general risk-off environment and the funds are not flowing at the moment and they're especially not flowing into the spot vehicle. Spot vehicle dropping a little bit over 3% on the day which is roughly in line with the drop in the spot price. We're still at a substantial discount to net asset value. Closed on Friday at a net a discount to NAV of minus 8.19%, uh, which is significant, although it was as high as almost 16% earlier in the previous week. So happy to see that close a bit here. If, uh, if uranium can hold and flows come into spot or if spot can hold and uranium falls, we'll get closer to that net asset value parity. And we can see some funds come back in once we're back at a premium. We're now at over four weeks uh, of a pretty consistent discount to net asset value for SPUT, which is by far the longest period since they launched and took over UPC last summer. Um, this is 100% attributed to just risk off across markets, which we are continuing to see. And I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Uh, they continue to sit on $26.5 in cash. They're not going to spend any more of that money, most likely, at least not on uranium, maybe to keep the lights on. Turning to ETFs, neither URA nor UNM reported changes in their outstanding shares, um, which is uh, not, that's actually kind of surprising. I was expecting to hear of some redemption from Thursday of last week. That was the day that we had that deep undercut low, which why don't we just look at the charts right now and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Last Thursday was this big sell-off uh, that marked the low point, at least in this intracycle pullback here. We continue to move higher URA um, above this uh, lower trend line within this accumulation cylinder, URA up just over 1% on the day. Still nothing to write home about in terms of volume, but either way, happy to see that this dead cat bounce, if that is what it, what it is, um, is not just selling off immediately. So we're holding here. Good to see, uh, we need to see renewed volume. And of course, in order for this bull market really to, uh, to be back on, we need to see most of these stocks. Most importantly, the ETFs and the leaders such as Cameco back up above a rising 200 day moving average. Either way, we still are hanging on within this Livermore accumulation cylinder. But as I mentioned, I don't know that we're yet out of the woods here in this risk off uh, market. Um, I think honestly that we need to hear some, uh, some pivoting from the Fed turning dovish and or some improved inflation numbers that's likely not to come in the short term. So perhaps we see more volatility. Either way, uh, still coming off of deeply oversold territory for almost all of the stocks within the space. Like I mentioned, the Sprott Physical Rating Trust selling off today about 3% and um, still uh, hanging on above that low of last week. Even with uranium down, we were at almost a 16% discount to NAV for a moment there. And so happy to see that discount closing, but look at the volume. Volume is, is not really much to speak about here. We need renewed volume coming into SPUT, and that will likely mark the next uptrend for uranium. That is what we are looking out for. 
Cameco, one of the stronger stocks of the day, up to almost two and a half percent on the day. Decent volume. Um, Cameco has been a leader over the past few months in the sector. And this is obviously we want to see Cameco succeed. I want to see this chart get back above that rising 200 day, which hasn't even started to flatten yet. So this is likely one of the more bullish charts in the sector coming off of what looks to be a higher low from previous weeks, uh, Thursday, that, that undercut low on Thursday. I want to briefly look again at uh, the, Sprott, the Sprott Uranium Miners ETF relative to the S&P. This is a chart I shared with you last week. I think this is a very interesting chart. Um, as I mentioned, this trend line we see here marked the low points for the uranium cycle. Um, obviously, this was the beginning of the bull market, December 2020 and uh, was kind of the start of this trend line here. We moved up from there, pulled back throughout last summer, bottomed in uh, July. Uh, the equities actually bottomed in July, but this chart bottomed in August. Um, the uh, uranium, the URNM relative to the S&P, before we rocketed higher once Sprott started buying uranium hand over fist and issuing shares to their ETM. Then again, the pullback uh, that ended in late January, early February. So this trend line since the beginning of the bull market has marked a low in the interest cycle pullbacks for uranium. And we just hit it again. Will that hold? I don't know. That doesn't necessarily mean that the shares of uranium won't go lower along with the broad market. This is a relative strength chart in terms of our, our, our puppies performing against the spoos. So we're holding this so far. And today was another green day in, in outperformance of the S&P. That is a good sign. Okay, for the mailbag section, uh, I want to discuss a piece of news that came through about ANU Energy. If you recall, ANU Energy is a physical uranium fund that was established in the East. This is, because uh, uh, Prom is part of the establishing of this fund, because Prom was part of the initial funding of this fund. Uh, so they announced last year that they would be raising an initial 50 million. That was because Prom was putting in, I think it was 22.5% the uh, National Bank of Kazakhstan putting in 22.5%. And then I believe it was the entity that, uh, that ANU put in the remainder capital, if I recall correctly. Either way, that initial fill, uh, 50 million has been reached. In fact, it was oversubscribed by almost 50%. They raised a US 74 million for the initial round of this fund. That's approximately 1.4 million pounds of uranium if they were to spend all of it. I don't know if they will. We were waiting for that news to come through, but they have reiterated they expect to do a follow on round of 500 million. Um, so that's significant. That's significant. And basically, this fund was established to, uh, to, to have a uh, exposure for physical uranium, a financial vehicle with exposure to physical uranium for uh, investors in the East with an appetite for such things. This is going to be marketed towards those in Asia, uh, Middle Eastern countries, Middle Eastern investors, uh, Chinese investors, et cetera. So this is yet another uh, quote unquote financial demand for uranium. Now, uh, we don't know the exact structure of this fund yet, whether or not they will be selling uranium, let's say if they're at a deep discount to NAV, or if they will be holding only just like SPUD is doing, we're not sure on that. But this is yet another piece of demand uh, for financial players in addition to Yellow Cake in London and the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust in Canada. So this is a, a pretty big deal. I think that this is going to be a growing theme. And it's obviously all things considered when we're looking at the markets, looking at the way that uranium shares have been trading, even with an, uh, a stellar fundamental backdrop to see that this development has come through. This was rumored last year. And, um, and this uh, has now been solidified, 74 million raised. They're going to buy their initial uranium shortly. And this fund is set up. So now institutional flows coming into this fund can buy more physical uranium and take more uranium that would have been available to traders and utilities off the market, essentially, and into the hands of financial players. So the setup for this to be squeezed is coming. And uh, this is one of those moments where we have been uh, beholden to the broad markets and the weakness there, um, but the fundamentals are there. So anybody who is astute and is, who, and is who is aware of this fundamental setup and developments like this knows what to do in these types of environments. So we'll have to see how the rest of the week plays out and the weeks going forward. Like I said, we're looking for volume to come back into SPUT. That'll be kind of the signal that uh, the game is back on. 
Until then, we, uh, we are likely to chop sideways unless we start to see the spot price of uranium rising. And without sput, it's highly unlikely because A, we're coming into the summertime, and uh, which is usually a slow time for the spot price of uranium and for uranium in general. And B, the utilities are not wanting to drive that price up. So to the extent that utilities can stay out of the spot market, they will. They don't want to drive that price up because many of them still have deliveries that are partially referenced to the spot price. And when those pounds are delivered, if spot price is on fire, they have to pay up for it. So likely to not see large utility demand coming into the spot market. And so we are looking for that, uh, the flows into spot to come back and that will likely signal. But of course we could see um, the way that uranium shares typically trade on these pullbacks is something will, something happens to trigger that leg up. And when it happens, it happens quickly. Uh, that could be a piece of news that could be um, officially Russian uranium being sanctioned, uh, whether from the US or from the EU or actually being cut off from Russia. If that piece of news came in, we're going to see a very, very sharp reversal in these shares. Um, this is why it's typically better to be early uh, when you're trading uranium or investing in uranium. Dollar cost averaging, generally speaking, is uh, a decent idea in this space. And if you have dry powder, when the market pulls back, uh, deploying that in moments like this typically will uh, bring stellar gains going forward. And I think that this is yet another one of those moments. All right, take care. We will see you again tomorrow. Cheers.